Good day, everyone, or should I say good night? It's pretty late, and you just heard my uh, bedtime alarm go off, my 9 o'clock bedtime alarm. Um, it's not actually my bedtime. It's just uh, it tells me to get ready for bed, so I should be getting ready for bed right now, but I thought I'd make a quick video. Um, so I'm going to Fatima this summer, Portugal. Um, it's for World Youth Day, if you ever heard of that. Um, I'll explain a bit about what it is, but um, so I guess the story of how I heard of this trip was last Christmas, last uh, a bit after Christmas, January. So anyhow, I um, I was just scr scrolling through the Archdiocese website one day, and I saw that a group was leaving from Louisville, um, about 20, 25 people, so I uh, left my email, then um, the guy messaged me back um, that Friday, I believe, a few days later. And so he said, um, like, the final payment or the first payments due um, that Monday. And so you had to pay that payment to go. And so um, being me, I guess, I didn't see the email or message or whatever it was until that Sunday, I think. Um, so I saw it. I called him back and he said, um, as long as I could pay by the next day, Monday, that I could still go. So that's what I did. I scrambled around, found $1,500, I think it was, that first payment. And it's been about uh, $3,500 total, which um, I had to make some extra fudge at the monastery to get up to that amount. Um, anyhow, I've already paid for the trip. Um it wasn't too difficult, Tommy. I had some savings built up um, from all the fudge making at the monastery. However, I know some of the other people are struggling as well to make um, to get the rest of the funds, or they'll also struggle to um, once they get there. You have to have like a thousand dollars to actually live. You have to um, purchase the hotel rooms, food, of course, uh, other things like that. So. I'm just going to read over um, the GoFund, not GoFundMe. I used uh, the Christian company, Give, Send, Go. That's, um, I encourage everyone to use that. It's, it's actually a Christian company compared to GoFundMe, which was uh, like just banning people left and right, I believe, and taking like thousands of dollars from people they didn't like from conservatives. So uh, be careful about the companies you support. However, let's not get too dire uh, of a tone going for this video. So we better switch the screens. All right. So I titled it, Help Young Catholics on Their Pilgrimage to World Youth Day. So you see, we've already got a bit of money, $35. Anonymous donor. Thank you very much. Eric Shesky, one of my good friends. Go uh, check out his website. That's my shout out for that donation, Eric. I appreciate it. Um, just the daily, uh, the weekly you demon podcast and the daily you demon website check out both of those very good content there so yeah you see pope francis in the middle of all the children um so yeah, you should be developing an idea about world youth day so the pope um is the main event i think he comes to uh comes to the setup i guess I really don't know what World Youth Day is. Um, I didn't really research it. Um, like when I heard about it, I was like, ah, I'll go on it. At that point, I was doing a bunch of crazy things, like uh, leaving my full-time career to work in a monastery. Um, lots of things like that. I was, just, I was just all over the place. So I, I was thinking I'm the type of person to think about things after I do them, after I start doing them. So I didn't even know we were going to Fatima until like the first meeting we had as a group. Um, that was a big surprise, an interesting surprise as well. Um, I do know a bit about Fatima. I guess I've only been a Catholic since November. Um, I was a Protestant before then, so I definitely have the Christian background for about two or three years now, but um, there's so much to the Catholic faith. You can learn about it for a thousand years and you still won't know half of it. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll learn on the ground. I'll learn a lot about Fatima, Our Lady. Um, I might meet the Pope. We'll see. I think there's two million other 
Catholics there. So uh, it's quite a bit of people um, standing between me and the Pope, I think. But um, the Pope says Mass, so that'll be really special. There's lots of other events. There's an all-night vigil, I know. There's lots of um, just events for the youth, I guess. And by youth, it's really um, anyone from teenagers to uh, 70-year-olds, I believe. Um, anyone can really go. Yeah, it was made for the youth, and uh, this, this story will kind of explain it. So um, going back a little bit. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. That's from Matthew 19. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out. We ought, therefore, to show hospitality to such people that we may work together for the truth. And that's from 3 John. So, yeah, that's um, an encouragement from John to help other Christians and that's what we'll be relying on us um, pilgrims. Um, not the biggest fan of the word, but it is it is accurate, I guess. Going to another country, and we we don't actually um, like know if we'll have hotel rooms every night. Like they told us that we'll be sleeping on the ground um, at least once, just maybe in a gym floor another time. Because that many people coming to the city, you you don't know if you can get a hotel room, so. Um, there's a good chance like a lot of the families in the area will take us in and uh, feed us, take care of us, give us a bed or something. So, um, yeah, you just see the Christian hospitality, the need for that. Um, so, yeah, it's a good chance for you to show it, um, not to beg you for money. All right. Heeding the words of Christ, we need your help to send around 20 young Catholics. And it's actually like 25 27 now, I believe, lots of Catholics. They're all from the Louisville, Kentucky area to the this year's World Youth Day held in Lisbon, Portugal. The first World Youth Day event in 1986 was initiated by St. Pope John Paul II. Um, these week-long events were hundreds of thousands of youths and sometimes millions. It was It's more often than not millions, at least. Um, they gather and witness of the gospel in the words of JP2. Um, young people have become a great and fascinating witness. Or not young people, I was getting ahead of myself there. These, these World Youth Day events have become a great and fascinating witness that young people give of themselves. They have become a powerful means of evangelization. In the young, there is, in fact, an immense potential for good and for creative possibility. So, yeah, kind of... Um, the reason I was able to quote that was because I was just an adoration like a week before I wrote this. And I just randomly pulled a book off the shelf. What was it called? It's a John Paul II book. Um, Crossing the Threshold, I believe. And I, it had a section about the World Youth Day. So, um, yeah, I learned a bit about what it was from there. And I was able to quote that. Pulled up out of memory. I remembered that. Um, so perhaps that's providential. Who knows? Everything is providential. But the potential the Holy Father refers to is none other than the acceptance of God's will. To accept God's purpose for our life, we must not always know where our foot shall land. We only know that we must lift a foot. So yeah, um, you just only have to lift your foot. You don't have to know where it lands. God does the landing part. So it is in seeding my desires to know what tomorrow brings, trusting in providence that I find the day filled with an abundance of joy and things to be grateful for. So, yeah, this was a time um, when I wrote this. I forget when I wrote it, probably three months ago now. Um, even before then, like I had no idea what tomorrow was going to bring. Um, I still don't know, but I know... Um, I'm going to be doing this YouTube channel tomorrow. So I kind of have a general plan. Like I'm doing the podcast. I have a routine, I suppose. But back then, that was before the podcast. Um, I was doing everything new every single day. Everything, every day was a different thing. So it was, um, I was trusting in God's providence. And I moved into this apartment. As you see, this beautiful apartment here. Um, 
so that was an experience moving out of my parents' house and living alone for the first time. Um, yeah, I developed a real humility and trust in God during those times. And I'm um, just sort of emptying myself out of all these uh, prideful desires and things. That's really when the grace flooded in. Um, I'm still living off that, I suppose, all that grace from that time period just trusting in God. So, um, I forget where we're at. Uh, let me find it. So, yeah, giving the most bitter of alms has allowed me to discover uh, more potently the sweetness of God. So, I quote Psalm 119, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so that's from Matthew 6, 21. Um, I got my verses mixed up there. But if you can see, like, my writing style, I like to quote writers and I like to quote scripture. And I get that from St. Alphonsus Liguori, um, my patron saint. I, I pretty much get 70% of my spirituality from St. Alphonsus Liguori. And he got a lot of St. Francis de Sales and as well as St. Bernard and those other two guys I get the other 30% from them. So it's all connected. Um, he's a very good writer. So go check out his writings. Anyhow, we must walk by faith. That is what I am. I believe many others going on this pilgrimage have done. Most of us do not reasonably have the funds to go on this trip. Our savings accounts are meager and our expenses, whether it be college, a car payment, or moving into an, a new, um, yeah, you see, I forgot the word right there, but moving into a new house will not disappear. Yet our willingness to walk toward this destination is none other than how our faith is strengthened. We trust that if God wants us to go on this trip, he will provide the means. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown to the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Um, that's a really great verse, a really good passage right there. On the other hand, Christians have always relied on the help of others. Recall the 14th chapter of Mark. The disciples asked Christ, where do you want us to go? Christ told them that a man in the city would be waiting for them, offering them a room to stay. So, yeah, that's a that verse is really applicable to this trip. Um, a lot of us young people, we ask Christ, where do you want us to go? What direction do you want us to take in life? Um and Christ tells us to uh, go into the city, that there will be um, people in the city that are there to help us, that are offering a room to stay. Um, so really, it's God offering the room to stay, like just trust in God and then God will provide. So I know that God will provide many kind and generous people to help us along the way. So therefore, I ask confidently for your help. If you don't have any money to spare, I ask rather for your prayers. But if you do wish to donate any amount taking away from some of, a, of the total costs for all 20 of us, I ask you to also trust God. Trust that your donation will not be wasted. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will reap also sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So that's St. Paul there. Um, just give as you are able. If you can't donate money, just pray. Just send up uh, prayers as financial donations. And that's what I do at Mass. Whenever I forget to bring money, I just pray and then offer that up as a donation. Um, that happens more than it should because I don't carry cash around. However, on a different note... In your consideration of donating toward our cause, remember the conviction of the former Pope, St. John Paul II. We need the enthusiasm of the young. We need their Joe de uh, Vivre. I suppose I pronounced that correctly. 
In it is reflected something of the original joy God had in creating man. The young experience the same joy within themselves. The young know how to express this joy in their own special way. Um, I suppose I do. I, I don't know. Um, but anyhow, thank you for taking a moment to hear our cause. Your prayers or alms will help immensely. Our gratitude will not be empty, and you shall remain in our prayer as always. May God bless you. So you see, uh, you see the guy who wrote that, Michael Snellen, 21 years old. Um, so yeah, I, have, I put a $5,000 go right there. Um, I think that can easily be reached, and that money would be split evenly between everyone going. Um, lots of people like me, I suppose. Um, lots of young people, so... Um, I'm speaking to all of you older people now. Help out the young people. Because um, uh, the old people have to help out the young people so that they can help out the uh, young people when they're old. Um, so it's a cycle. And uh, when I'm there, I'll speak to the Pope about, um, now I've already mentioned this to somebody, about starting a World Ode Day, a World Ode Day for older people. Uh, aged people, I should say, the proper term. However, um, I thank you for watching this. If you made it to the end, this video is quite long. Now that I look back over at the screen, um, about 17 minutes here. So it's uh, 17 minutes closer to my bedtime, and um, I better be going off to bed. I got I got a lot of fudge making to do at the monastery tomorrow. I didn't make any today because the monk, uh, he had to work on his tomatoes, but tomorrow I'm sure there will be lots of fudge in store. So thank you everyone for watching and may God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.